What is going on, lovely people? This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biology playlist. In the last videos, we have talked about the placenta and the fetal circulation. We'll turn our attention into the nervous system. Here is my biology playlist. Please watch these videos in order for maximum retention. Today's video is video number 33. The biology playlist is for the basic stuff. But if you want the PhD stuff, check out my physiology playlist. I have 10 videos on nerve physiology where we dig really deep. My physiology playlist has videos about the autonomic nervous system, nerve, and muscle physiology. Let me ask you a question to make sure that you understood the previous lecture. Here's the question. The nervous system is derived from the endoderm, the mesoderm, or the ectoderm. If you said the ectoderm, you're absolutely correct. Yay! Let me remind you, the trilaminar embryo has endoderm, mesoderm, ectoderm. The ectoderm will give you two things, neuroectoderm for the nervous system and surface ectoderm for the epidermis of the skin, hair, nail, etc. Let's talk about here, neuroectoderm. It will subdivide into neural tube and neural crest. Neural tube is for the central nervous system. Neural crest is for the peripheral nervous system. Who makes the myelin of the central nervous system? Oligodendrocytes. Who makes the myelin of the peripheral nervous system? Schwann cells. The beautiful nervous system is divided into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system is made of the brain and spinal cord. Where do I find the brain? In your skull, which is the cranium. Where do I find my spinal cord? In the vertebral column. So only the brain and the spinal cord are the CNS. How about the peripheral nervous system? Whatever is coming out of the brain, cranial nerves, and whatever is coming out of the spinal cord, spinal nerves. Sounds cool. So that central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, peripheral nervous system, cranial nerves and spinal nerves. You have 12 pairs of cranial nerves and 31 pairs of spinal nerves. I have to note something here. All of these cranial nerves are peripheral nervous system except cranial nerve number two, which is the optic nerve. The optic nerve is technically part of the central nervous system. No one will ask you about this, but it's very important to understand pathology. Nervous system, CNS, PNS, CNS, brain and spinal cord, PNS, cranial nerves and spinal nerves. T tell me about the brain. You have the cerebrum, this part, you have the cerebellum, this part, and you have the brain stem, which has three pieces, midbrain, pons, and medulla. And then you have the spinal cord, just one cord, but we divide it into sections. We have the cervical segments, thoracic segments, lumbar segments, sacral segments, and one coccygeal segment. Peripheral nervous system, uh, cranial nerves and spinal nerves. Cranial nerves, 12 pairs. Some of them are purely sensory. Others are purely motor. Some of them are mixed. However, all of your spinal nerves are mixed. Another classification, nervous system could be somatic or autonomic. Somatic is voluntary control. I can move my arms. I can move my legs. But I cannot tell my glands to secrete more because they are autonomic. They are involuntary. Each one is subdivided into motor and sensory as you see. If I want to move my leg, the order has to start in the brain and goes downwards to my leg. But for me to feel sensory, let's say, a pin scratched my leg, that sensation. The sensation will start in my leg and it will go up until it reaches the brain. So motor goes from brain to the organ. Sensory starts in the organ and goes to the brain. Okay, medicosis, what is a nerve? A nerve is a collection of axons in the peripheral nervous system. Another classification. What is the structural unit of the nervous system? The neuron or the nerve fiber. What's the functional unit? It's called the reflex arc, which starts here, sensory, boom, center, boom, motor. It's a reflex arc. Today's topic is the neuron, which is the structural unit. Here is your beautiful neuron. We start here with dendrites. And then the cell body, also known as the soma. The word somatic means body. Soma means body. And this very long piece, which is called the axon. What is this thing right here? That's the myelin. This picture is of a myelinated fiber. Who makes that lovely myelin if you are in the central nervous system? Thank you, oligodendrocytes. But if you are in the peripheral nervous system, it's the Schwann cell. Is myelin good? Myelin is amazing because if you have myelin, this will increase the speed of conduction 
of the nerve impulse. However, the problem with myelin is it is super expensive. That's why we have to economize on scarce resources in your body. Not all of your fibers are myelinated. If all of your fibers were myelinated, you would need 18 meals every day and you will spend all of your day eating and going to the bathroom. And you would be as big as three sumo wrestlers. Some axons are myelinated, others are not myelinated. The myelinated are A and B fibers. A are thick, B are thinner, C are the thinnest. Which one do you think is the fastest fiber A? For two reasons. Number one, it's myelinated. Number two, it is thick. The second fastest is B because it's myelinated, however, it is thin. How about the worst C? Unmyelinated and very thin, but it's very cheap to make. Friedrich Nietzsche said, he who has a why to live can bear almost any how. But Medicosis says, he who has a why to the action potential can bear almost any mechanism. What is the action potential? It's the nerve impulse. It's how your nervous system parts communicate with each other. The action potential is life. How do your muscles contract? Action potential. How does your skin feel? Action potential. How does your gland secrete? Action potential. How does your eye see? Action potential. How does your ear hear? Action potential. How does your brain think? All is action potential or nerve impulse. And this was nugget number one. Nugget number two, the nerve impulse in your body is always unidirectional. Starts here and goes this way, this way, not the other way, only one way. If you only go one way, we'll call you unidirectional. If you start here and go downward, we'll call you orthodromic. So your nerve impulses are unidirectional and orthodromic. So the nerve impulse will start here and go down until what? Until you go to this axon knob or axon terminalis, which is here, the terminal knob. And then we will rupture those vesicles and secrete something called the neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter will leave this neuron and it will go to the target organ. The target organ could be another neuron, it could be a muscle, it could be a gland, whatever. And we have many receptors. Nugget number three, the nerve impulse starts here. What's that? This is the neck of the neuron. We call it the axon HELOC. And this is the most excitable part of the axon. The structure of the neuron. We have these dendrites and then this is the soma. This is the axon and this is the axon terminus or synaptic knob or axon terminalis. What are the dendrites? They are branches. What's the function? They increase the surface area so we can receive more signals from other neurons in the brain or spinal cord or whatever. How about the soma or the cell body? It's the processing center. This is the brain of your neuron, no pun intended. Surrounded by a beautiful cell membrane like any cell, contains nucleus like any cell, cytoplasm and organelle. And then there is the axon or the nerve fiber. It carries the nerve signal in one directional only. We call it unidirectional. It can carry some substances backwards from here to here. But I said substances. I did not say nerve impulses because nerve impulses only go this way from here to here. Substances can go whatever they want. However, nerve impulses are always unidirectional. They're always orthodromic. Okay, Medicosis, where is the axon that we have just talked about? It's here. You see this yellow spot? That's your axon or nerve fiber. All right. Surrounded by some connective tissue, and this is called endoneurium. And then if you gather them together, we have a family of nerve fibers here. Now this is called perineurium. Collect those families together, and now we have epineurium. What are nissle bodies or nissle granules? Basically, they are the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So they are granular bodies in the neurons because they are organelles. You find them in the soma and in the dendrites, but you will not find them in the axon or in the axon hillock. Function, well, they are RER. So it's the same function of the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is protein synthesis. I mean, think. Not all of your nerve fibers are myelinated. Some have myelin, some do not have myelin. What is that myelin? Basically, it is 75% fat, 25% protein. It acts as an insulator. Therefore, if the nerve impulse has to move this way, it has to jump. Why? Because this is insulation. I cannot move here. So therefore, I have to jump from here to here to here to here. Jumping is actually good because it's faster 
than just walking. All right, Medicosis, if I have to jump this way, this way, this way, what do you call these things right here? These indentations are called nodes of Ronvier. My French is on fleek. Again, who makes the myelin? Oligodendrocytes in the CNS, Schwann cells in the PNS. Some of our neurons have myelin, others are not myelinated. Myelin appears white. So if the neuron is myelinated, it appears white. If the neuron is unmyelinated, it appears gray. Look at your spinal cord. The gray is in the central and the white is on the peripheral, which means this gray, this part is unmyelinated nerves, but the white stuff is myelinated nerves. However, the brain is the exact opposite. The unmyelinated is on the periphery, the myelinated is in the center. Pause and review. Pause and review. This is an unmyelinated fiber, or what I call it, a naked fiber, but this is a myelinated fiber, and therefore it has what? These indentations known as nodes of Rambier. If you have myelin, the nerve impulse has to jump, which is actually faster. The thicker the fiber, the faster the propagation of the nerve impulse. Have you ever been on an airplane? Yeah, there is a pilot and there is a co-pilot. Same thing in your brain and spinal cord. There is a pilot, the neuron, and co-pilot, neuroglial cells or simply glial cells. The big boss is the neuron. The helpers, the aids, are the glial cells, which include oligodendrocytes, Schwann cells, astrocytes, microglia, ependymal cells. Remember when we talked about the intermediate filaments, we talked about neurofilaments and GFAP. Neurofilaments is for the neurons, GFAP is for the glial cells. Again, these are your glial cells. Some of them are in the central nervous system, others are in the peripheral nervous system. Functions of the co-pilots, I mean of the glial cells. The oligodendrocytes are the cells that make myelin for central nervous system fibers. However, Schwann cells are the ones that make myelin for the peripheral nervous system fibers. How about astrocytes? They form the blood-brain barrier, which separates your brain from your blood. And that's why many toxins that are present in the blood cannot enter the brain. Microglia is like the macrophage of your brain. Remember, in your tissue, there is macrophage. In your brain, this macrophage is called microglia. How about ependymal cells? Ependymal cells, they line the cavities in your brain and spinal cord. These cavities are called ventricles. And they secrete cerebrospinal fluid, which is protective for your brain. It provides nourishment, protects us from infection, etc. And don't forget, the cerebrospinal fluid acts as a cushion to protect your brain against trauma if someone hits you in the head. What are neurotropins? Neurotropins are proteins secreted by neuroglial cells or by myocytes. They help development and growth and survival and regeneration of this beautiful neurons, especially the axon. It's very hard for the cell body to regenerate, but the axon can regenerate. If you cut it, it can grow back. Now let's go to the clinic. Clinical pearls, pathology baby. We have many diseases that are known as demyelination disease. What does demyelination mean? Removal of the myelin. Oh, and we, with these diseases include a disease known as multiple sclerosis, another disease known as Guillain-Barré syndrome. This lecture is all about French. Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease. You have antibodies attacking your own body and they are attacking the central nervous system here. However, Guillain-Barré, we have antibodies attacking my peripheral nervous system. Remember when I told you that the optic nerve is an exception? It's a cranial nerve. However, it is part of the CNS. Yeah, and that's why multiple sclerosis attacks the eye. However, Guillain-Barré does not attack the eye because the eye or the optic nerve is not part of the peripheral nervous system. It's only part of the central nervous system. Something your professor will never tell you. If you like this video, I have a renal physiology course on my website, medicosisperfectionetics.com. It has 10 videos, 10 cases, etc. You will master kidney physiology like it's nobody's business. And for a limited time, you can get a 40% discount towards anything on my website. Just use promo code KIDNEY. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. In the next video, we'll talk about the action potential. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.